Today's edition of the Dallas Cowboys Report is made possible by True Classic Tees, shirts that actually fit men, whether you're a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, or somewhere in between. 25% off all of their products when you use promo code CHAT over at trueclassictees.com slash chat. Let's break down what's coming up on today's rather lengthy Dallas Cowboys report. There's a lot of chaos going on on the eve of roster cut down day. We'll discuss the latest on the roster cuts, couple moves made so far, a potential Denzel Mims trade or trading for Darius Slayton, plus where Micah Parsons was on the top 100 list. But first... The trade rumor that was and then wasn't for a brief span of 30 out or 30 minutes. The report from Aaron Wilson. The Cowboys and Jets in conversation over a Chuma Adoga trade. And then 30 minutes later, there is no expectation of an Adoga trade. I do wonder if the Cowboys were once again used as leverage for the offensive line and Adoga, just because of the fact that the Cowboys are always linked to players and up not making moves, he would have been a swing tackle option. The reports out of Dallas are the Cowboys will look at other players. Adoga doesn't appear to be one, although I would not rule out him getting cut by the Jets. And if he does get cut, then maybe the Cowboys could show some more interest there. But for now, nothing things could change. It appears no trade for Adoga along the offensive line, which does still need help in light of the Tyron Smith injury. The Cowboys have been expected to add more offensive line depth before the start of the 2022 season. Smith is the favorite to start at the left tackle spot. The Cowboys say they plan to use an internal option, or at least that's what they've leaked out there, that we're going to use internal guys, and that's actually something Stephen Jones straight up said. The good news for Smith is that he has been cleared to return to practice. Now, here's what Stephen Jones, because Smith of the Inquisitor, here's what Stephen Jones said about the offensive line in general. We're always looking to upgrade our roster. Certainly the offensive line is, is one where we aren't necessarily loaded with depth there. Certainly something we'll continue to look at. But the Cowboys do need a line depth. Um, I am very underwhelmed by Josh Ball. I don't think he's a good football player, at least on the left side. Matt Wolesko, we haven't seen very much of at this point. Isaac Alarcon is, I think, a practice squad guy this year. You need more O-line depth, which we knew months ago, and the Cowboys didn't really uh, address it. In the event they do trade for Adoga, I'm fine with that. I know he's not a sexy name. Guys, we have to be realistic here too. You're not going to find an awesome offensive lineman available for cheap. That's not how anything works in the end. Let's talk cuts now for the Cowboys here. Five cuts we know of so far. Ben DiNucci, TJ Vasher, James Empey, Eamon Simon, and Big Cat Brian. Let's talk TJ Vasher first here. That one's not a huge surprise. The big-bodied outside wide receiver splashed early in camp in the preseason and then kind of disappeared as things went on from that standpoint. Didn't make any real noise. I was impressed, though, by Ben DiNucci. I, I thought he played very well. For a guy that didn't really get any reps, for him to be able to contribute uh, in the fourth quarter of most preseason games, I thought he played pretty well overall. But with DiNucci out of the running, two-man race for the backup quarterback role. Is it Will Greer or Cooper Rush? This will be the pinned comment on today's show. So if an ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there, type in WG for Will Greer or CR for Cooper Rush. All right, among the other Cowboys cuts, you mentioned the Nooch and TJ Vasher. James Empey could be a practice squad guy. I'm not sure Eamon Simon will be. He didn't play that much uh, in the preseason. I'm kind of hopeful Big Cat Bryant is, if only for the name. But he also, I thought, flashed some at edge rusher. Um, the Cowboys will, of course, make a lot more cuts as the days goes on. And then on Wednesday slash Thursday, we'll start to actually officially finalize practice squad options. So with that in mind, name a player who you want on the Dallas Cowboys practice squad. You know, it could be a Danucci. Could be a Vasher. Could be somebody they've not yet cut. Let me know in the comments section. Today's Cowboys report is made possible by True Classic Tees. 25% off 
when you use promo code CHAT over at trueclassictees.com slash chat. If you're like me, if you're like most people, ah, maybe you're carrying a little bit of excess weight somewhere you don't want to. Well, True Classic Tees help fit you so it's not super obvious you've got a, a, a beer gut, whether it's a big one or a large one or whatever. They, they are t-shirts that actually are designed to fit men instead of fitting the, the model or the mannequin or whatever. They've got t-shirt or shorts, by the way, which I find it super comfortable as well. 25% off all of their products at trueclassictees.com slash chat. I'm wearing one right now. I promise you, it feels incredibly comfortable. You will not regret the purchase. Get yours today. Links in the comments section and the description, trueclassictees.com slash chat. Let's talk a different Jets trade here in the end. Denzel Mims. Now, this is the one more Cowboys fans want because they've heard of Denzel Mims as opposed to Chuma Adoga who, you know, we'll see there. Now, Mims's agent, Ron Slavin, has publicly requested a trade uh, for or from the Jets, which I think makes sense. He's buried on the depth chart. He's a former second-round pick who has flashed when given opportunities to an extent, but is also going to be no more than wide receiver four in New York. He's pretty cheap, by the way. Two years, $2.45 million dollars. That's the cost of Denzel Mims if the Cowboys trade for him, which should be pretty affordable for even Catboy. The issue for Mims is kind of twofold. One, beyond being Barry, that's number one, I guess. Number two is he hasn't fared very well in his NFL career. Hasn't had many chances. 31 catches, 490 yards, zero touchdowns. Didn't do anything last year. He had eight catches, 133 yards, no scores. In 2022... Seven catches, 102 yards, and one touchdown. Now, that was in the week three preseason game alone. He basically outplayed his entire season last year in one game against admittedly Giants backups at, at cornerback. Mims, I think, could be an upgrade over guys like Noah Brown, Fehoko, uh, prize a pure receiver, definitely Dennis Houston, Brandon Smith. I also wonder just how impactful he would be immediately. My concern is this. By the time you get time you get Denzel Mims up to speed, you are probably having Michael Gallup back already. I would take Mims over James Washington. I'm not sure the Cowboys will go that route, but do you want him over Fehoko? Because those guys kind of fall into similar buckets. They're, they're kind of lottery tickets. We don't know what they are. They could be great. They could end up being, you know, two cents. It doesn't mean that much. So I would be cautious just throwing a bunch of lottery picks at wide receiver. I think you're okay in terms of wide receiver four, wide receiver five. I would rather have a more proven piece on the outside. But what do you guys want? Do you want to trade for Denzel Mims? Y for yes or N for no? Sound off for me in the comments section. The other option here is Darius Slayton. Now, the Giants are actively taking trade calls on Slayton right now. That was leaked, which means they want to trade him. You can have him. $2.54 million salary is what he's owed this year. We will see if that actually ends up going down or not. The Giants have injured at receiver. Slayton had success in the past. He wasn't as good this past year. We could probably blame the quarterback from that perspective, but it's a matter of how much do you want to give up to acquire him in the end? The regression this past year was real, but he's also a more proven outside vertical threat than even James Washington. So again, it's the same category, right? Like, can you, do you just want to cut Washington and just add Slayton? If so, okay. Otherwise, you're okay at wide receiver fours and five and sixes. It's the lack of a true proven two while Gallup is out and a proven three either way that I, I am worried about. I don't know if Slayton or Mims really move the needle that much in the end. But if you had to trade for one, who would it be? DM for Denzel Mims or DS for Darius Slayton? I'm going DM, but I want to hear from you guys right now in the comments section. Now, Cowboys roster cuts are coming. Hit that big red button and subscribe for free daily videos right here on the Dallas Cowboys Report. It's youtube.com slash Cowboys TV. One last note here on the NFL Top 100 list, because that's a thing still. Micah Parsons, number 16 overall. He was 
fifth among defenders, by the way. Very unusual for a rookie to skyrocket that high after one year. Here were the top five defenders. Aaron Donald was number two overall. TJ Watt was number six overall. Jalen Ramsey was number nine. Miles Garrett was number 11. And I will continue to Michael Parsons an athlete when, when I can at number 16 overall. I will just make a note in a second. But first, the NFL Top 100 list is often kind of stupid. So where would you rank Micah Parsons among NFL players? Even I'm not saying number one. But sound off and let me know in the comment section. Remember, folks, the NFL Top 100 list is stupid. It's dumb. It is the players don't care about voting for it. They half-ass. You don't vote for 100, you vote for like 20 guys. And then it's the, well, this is the Top 100 list, which like if you're asking for Top 20, Doing top 100, that's not how math works. So it is stupid. I'll make note of it. Do not let yourself get worried about it in the end. Before we go, the penalty boys were a problem in the preseason again. We're going to bully the Cowboys into fewer flags this year by typing in flags in the comments. Because remember, folks, if it's for a good reason, like making the Cowboys a better football team, bullying works, and it's kind of worth it. 